Let me bring in Tim McMahon, the ESPN NBA reporter, who's done a great job keeping an eye on the James Harden situation. And uh, Tim, thanks for joining us. If I had you on yesterday at this time, what would you have said was going to happen in Houston with James Harden? Well, I would have said that a, a trade is closer to happening than not. Um, you know, obviously, <laughs> he. I, I think the trade was close to being completed, or they knew that they were close to a trade, whether it was going to be Philly or Brooklyn. And then Harden's performance Tuesday night, and by performance, I don't mean 5 of 16 from the floor. I mean, the post-game press conference was basically his way of saying, hey, I'm pretty much to the other side of the bridge, so let me just burn this. And, you know, you guys can figure out the rest. Do you think he knew he was going to be traded? It was a trade was imminent with what he because I said the same thing yesterday morning when I heard that. I said, that's his exit interview. He's basically saying, see ya. Do you think he knew at that time that he was going to be traded? Well, I think he knew that it was very close to happening and he wanted to make sure it happened. (laughs) You know, so again, whether it was Philly or Brooklyn, he was fine with either place. Obviously, he wanted to get out of Houston. Those were the top two teams on his list. And I think that was his way of saying, hey, I'm done here. You figure out w- which one of those two teams I'm going to, but uh, I'm done with the Rockets. It's a tricky legacy with James Harden. I don't know if he cares about his legacy, but you wrote a column on this exact topic here. How do you think Houston will remember James Harden? That it is. It's tricky, complicated, whatever you want to say. Look. With all due respect to Moses Malone, I would say James Harden is the second best player in franchise history behind only Akeem Olajuwon. Obviously, the huge difference there is Akeem Olajuwon delivered two championships to Houston. Harden was never able to get the Rockets even to the NBA Finals. And, I mean, it didn't work out with Dwight Howard. That went up in smoke. Chris Paul went up in smoke even quicker. Russell Westbrook, his old friend from L.A., and an you know, old OKC teammate one year, and they were ready to both, uh, you know, go other places. And it, it, and then just the way it ended, obviously, that's going to be bitter. You know, at the same, at the same time, it was eight mostly great years, individually brilliant years from James Harden. Um, gave the Rockets a chance to at least be contenders for most of that time. And it's funny because Rockets fans, for so much of that time, were kind of defending James Harden, who was the superstar. The rest of the league's fans loved to hate, hated his style of play and all that. Rockets fans spent so much time kind of getting this guy's back, and their reward is no championship parade and, and pretty much a slap in the face on the way out of town. We'll talk about the Nets and getting James Harden and what that means, but let me, how did the Rockets do in this trade? Well, look, this obviously was about trying to set themselves up for a rebuild. And the Rockets did not get the young franchise cornerstone that they insisted they needed to get in a James Harden deal. They could have. They could have had Ben Simmons, but they made the decision that they would rather have just, I mean, a historic bundle of unprotected first round picks. And so, look, those picks, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving will be long gone. And the Rockets are still going to be making picks that are the New York or the, uh, the Brooklyn Nets. So, I think you look at just the bundle of picks and say, hey, you know, that's a historic haul. And I I think realistically, as far as a team entering a rebuild, that's a good return. But I don't even know if Victor Oladipo is going to be there by season's end. Oh, yeah. Right? No no question about that. Look, Victor Oladipo, you can tell – why did they flip Karis LeVert for for Victor Oladipo? I think the first thing you look at is the contracts. Uh, Levert is owed 36 plus mil over the you know two seasons past this one. Oladipo's uh, an expiring contract, so they kind of get a chance to uh, bring Oladipo in. You know, take a look at him, figure out, hey, is this a guy that we we want to pay this all season? When we'll he's going to get paid because there's you know that free agency uh, class has been picked pretty thin, or is it a guy who maybe you know, he might not even be there after the trade deadline? Maybe they flip him again and you know continue to. to uh, kind of add to their pick stockpile. I like what the Pacers did. I like Karis LeVert a lot, and I got a chance to see him a lot when you know all the you know, when Kyrie was injured and that younger team kind of came to life there. And even uh, Jared Allen in Cleveland, he, he's yeah. an energy guy, team guy. Um, you know, maybe we don't need rim protectors, but I thought this is sort of those 
you know, after the dust, dust settles, people go, oh, that's right. You know, Indiana looks pretty good. Uh, you know, when Warren comes back, they have Turner, they have Sabonis, they have Brogdon. You know, they have a pretty good nucleus. Not depth, but they got a good nucleus. And then with Cleveland getting Jared Allen, I think he's a, a you know, a, a bona fide starting player who can put up a double-double every night. Your thoughts on No, I, I agree with teams? you. I think both of those teams that were brought into the deal really benefited. And, and for Indiana, Victor Oladipo was not going to be back there next year. So this is a chance to get a guy who can be a, you know, 20-ish point per game score. You know, the Rockets did not consider him to be a franchise cornerstone. And, and I think that's accurate. But, you know, at, at a place like Indiana, I think he fits very well with Malcolm Brogdon in that backcourt, you know, with, with Sabonis is really kind of their franchise player. I think it, it's, you know, the contract is reasonable for a guy who uh, is, has proven he can be as productive as he has been. And then I thought it was a great deal for Cleveland. When you look at the backcourt they're building around, they kind of hope – those young players, you know, the, the, the sex land backcourt, which is one of the great nicknames in the league. They hope those guys can kind of develop into a Blazers East sort of backcourt. And there's been really encouraging signs of progress from them. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to start two smallest scoring guards, you better get a really good rim protector behind them. You, you know, they will benefit from having a, a, a lob threat. And look, Jared Allen, they will pay him this summer. But at 22, he really fits with what they're building in Cleveland. All right, let's get to the Nets now on and off the court. Uh, we're talking to Tim McMahon, ESPN NBA reporter. Uh, where's Kyrie Irving and how does he fit into all of this? Uh, last I saw him, he was on Zoom. Okay. All right. <laughs> you know, look, I, I think that it is reasonable to look at this trade in some ways as Kyrie Irving insurance. And, uh, you know, the, the Nets – really amped up what they were willing to offer in terms of the draft compensation. That's what got this over the finish line. They amped that up since Kyrie has been, you know, whatever you want to call it, AWOL. Um, here's the deal. Kevin Durant, even coming off the Achilles, is a bona fide superstar in his prime. You basically got two more guaranteed years with him, and then he can become a free agent. So you have to, or at least you really want to if you're the Nets, maximize your opportunity to win a championship with him. You need to have not just a co-star, but a, another superstar to pair with him to do that. They bring in James Harden. He's, you know, say what you want. He's a dude who can efficiently put up 35 points and eight or 10 assists. Uh, there ain't too many of those dudes walking the face of the earth. And honestly, at this point, what they get from Kyrie, you can almost look at it as, as bonus. When James Harden makes his debut with the Nets, is Kyrie Irving on the floor? No, because first of all, I don't know when, and I'm not sure anybody with the Nets even knows when Kyrie is going to decide that, okay, this little sabbatical's over, I'm coming back to work. But when he does, even if he just, if he called them this morning and said, hey, I'm coming back, the league office is like, okay, great, Kyrie. Well, guess what? You're going to have to sit for a while because you blatantly violated the league's health and safety protocols, just like Harden had to, you know, he didn't end up missing a game because he helped get a game postponed. The but we're so open. casual about this, Tim. Like Kyrie Irving is, is missing right in front of our very eyes. Like it, I, it's, it's bizarre. I'm, but you know what? I mean, Kyrie kind of, obviously he's a guy who marches to the beat of his own drum. And really the, the confusing thing is like, I understood with Harden. Harden, let's be honest, he was trying to be as big of a pain in the ass as possible because he wanted to get the hell out of Houston. I don't, I don't know what Kyrie's intent is here because he's where he wanted to be. He chose to go to Brooklyn. He's playing with Kevin Durant, the guy he wanted the team up with. So this is obviously not a, it's not a situation where he's unhappy about his employer. So you know, at some point, Kyrie Irving will offer at least his version of an explanation. I certainly can't give it to you. Yeah, he probably won't. He probably will feel like he doesn't need to. If I'm, well, he'll say a lot of words, and then we'll have to figure out whether they actually mean anything. How do you think the Lakers view this trade? Should they be nervous? Honestly, I don't think. I think the Lakers, and you saw uh, or you heard Anthony Davis after last night's game. He basically says, yeah, well, it looks good on paper. We'll see how it looks on the floor. I think the Lakers feel like if they're healthy and if they're playing up to their potential, it doesn't matter who they run up against. I mean, 
LeBron in year 18 <laughs> still looks like, if not the best player in the league, he's definitely in that conversation. And, and Anthony Davis is in that conversation. They've got a night. They upgraded the supporting cast around those guys. This is after they cruised through the playoffs to a championship last year. I don't think the Lakers are losing any sleep over what Brooklyn did. Um, maybe they meet in the finals. Maybe they don't. But, again, it's, it's not disrespect to the Nets. I just think the Lakers probably look at the situation and say, hey, we're the best team in the league and nothing has changed. Did the 76ers win yesterday? I, I, un, I think Doc Rivers won yesterday. I think Ben Simmons won yesterday. Uh, I, be, I believe if this was up to Daryl Morey, James Harden would be in Philadelphia and Ben Simmons would be in Houston now. Um, but I, look, the Sixers have played very well this season. The Simmons and Bede thing with the, with the new pieces around them, the spacing around them, looks like it's a compatible duo uh, again. And I, I, I know it was not anything close to a consensus decision within that Sixers organization, that trading young Ben Simmons for 31-year-old James Harden, plus whatever you had to throw in the deal, would have been a good move for the Sixers. So uh, I, I think Philly's just fine not having gotten James Harden. Oh, man. If I talk to you in a month with the Nets, what are we talking about? <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Look. <laughs> First of all, again, Kyrie is just a wild card at this point. Like, even if he decides to come back, who knows? Who, who knows with him? He's obviously an immense talent, but he's, he's not a teammate you can count on. Doesn't mean he's a bad person. Uh, so, you know, he's done great things in the community, so on and so forth. But just in terms of an employee on a basketball team, he is completely unreliable. He's also ridiculously talented. And, again, whether they have Kyrie or not, James Harden, Kevin Durant, the two best scorers in the league on one team, the Nets are going to score a ton of points. They're going to win a lot of 135, 128 type of games. <laughs> Will they be able to play good enough defense to make a four series run through the playoffs? I, I'm, I will believe that when I see it. I, I don't think that we're, we're looking at the Nets suddenly as the no doubt favorites in the Eastern Conference, much less in the NBA. Thank you, Tim, for taking some time. We appreciate it. Good luck. Appreciate you having me. That's uh, Tim McMahon, ESPN NBA reporter.